Many people are unaware that the Malden River is an available resource because much of it flows underground. The river actually runs through the cities of Malden, Medford, and Everett, with tributaries in Melrose and Stoneham. The Malden flows into the Mystic River, making it part of the Mystic River watershed. A watershed is any land area in which all of the water flows into one common water body, such as a river, pond, or lake. As with most urban rivers, an important theme with the Malden River is that of environmental justice. Environmental justice is the concept that all people and all living things have a right to a clean and healthy environment and natural resources. So as part of this um, concept and this right, uh, what that means in practice is that environmental benefits and burdens should be shared fairly across all communities and also um, in a way that respects the needs of all people. As this video traces the Malden River through its past, present, and future, the theme of environmental justice will be ever-present. Before you start uh, with the history of the Malden, you have to really start with the, the Mystic, Mystic River, which is the main stem, main river that this uh, Malden River flows into. Now, the name uh, Mystic comes from the Indian word Mystic, which means Great Tidal River. And uh, it had great tidal flow. In the old days, uh, you could tell whether it was high tide or low tide, but which way the shopping carts were going in the river. <laughs> the two main sources of the Malden River are L Pond in Melrose and Spot Pond in Stoneham. Tributaries come in from these two ponds and form what we now call the Three Mile Brook, or another name for it is the Spot Pond Brook. And that runs all the way through Malden into, through the center, and becomes what is now known as the Malden River. It's interesting that this gentleman who came and drew this picture of Malden from above gave credit to the three or four major roads and the river that flowed through it. Because to those people, the river was every bit the road that these currently paved throughways are today. So what role did the river play in the development of Malden? The river led people right into what is currently the heart of Malden. The first people that came here by water traveled up from the, the, through the, what is now the Mystic River, took the right onto what is now the Malden River, and followed it to its pretty much where it was easy, and they actually noticed a naturally sandy beach off to the right and pulled in and walked out and started to explore. When settlers came here, they, they used this for industry. They would uh, set up tide mills, which are basically stone walls they would put out into the river with little openings that they would install a paddle wheel. And using um, ropes and, and pulleys and the like, they would use that power of the tide, turning that paddle wheel to power their factories. Industrial development really began when the, when the river became wide enough and deep enough for barges, for supplies to be brought in, and products to be brought out. By the 19th century, uh, many, many industries were locating along the Malden River, and they were important to the development of Malden, but the river was pretty much the, the system by which we got rid of our waste. They would take trash, put it on the barge, and a tugboat would push it out into Boston Harbor. Then they'd set it afire, and people from around the area would sit on the beaches at night and watch them burn. And then they bring the barge back here and the residue was used as fill. So that service went on for a while and like I say, this one sunk in place and lay here for several decades. Because I grew up here, I know it was here before. I know it was here as a, as a child. We had 27 different companies on 25 acres of land, many uh, which were from remnants from the old in industrial revolution a hundred years ago here for us at, at our site with the old asphalt companies and the rubber companies and saw the um, deterioration of the land. A great uh, industrial legacy here. Um, in this area there was Morton Oil, there was uh, Barrett Chemical, there was uh, Boston Rubber, Converse Rubber, Sneakers, the first Converse All-Stars were made here in Malden. Um, there was so much industry and that Back then, you know, people didn't realize. They thought that if they just dumped their, their trash, their waste into the river, that it would get taken out by the tides out to sea. They didn't realize that 
these chemicals, these pollutants, would sink to the bottom and contaminate the, the sediment itself. And they just used the river uh, as, as a way of eliminating the waste from the body of the city. And this is where environmental injustice does come in. I don't think anybody really thought much about what they were doing. I don't think it was done consciously or, or maliciously, but it was done. And the river became a stinking, stagnant, dead thing. When uh, we get down to the Mefford Street Bridge, and uh, I met my friend Joe, uh, we were about 10, 12 years old, he'd jump in the river and go swimming, and we'd watch him. But we'd also watch him come out, and he would come out orange. And I would say, hey Joe, I don't think you're supposed to be orange. The many decades of industrialization and urban development greatly impacted the water quality. Essentially the worst part of the river right now is the fact that it just does not flow. The dam controls its elevation. Historically, there has been several uh, issues of contamination in the river, but they're down in the sediments and actually covered by a benthic layer. So it's really uh, normal stormwater quality issues, bacteria, fecal coliform, E. coli, uh, things associated with stormwater runoff from an urban area that you just don't get the dilution and mixing to clean up. Stormwater runoff, which is rainwater that falls onto the ground and picks up pollutants as it runs over roads, parking lots, um, and down into catch basins, and eventually into our streams and rivers. Uh, over the past 30 or 40 years, the water quality in the Malden River has improved substantially. But because there is still contamination and pollution entering into the Malden River through storm drains um, and from sewer overflows, uh, there is both excess phosphorus or excess nutrients as they're called and sometimes there are blooms of E. coli bacteria, uh, both of which cause impairment to the water quality. It is heavily impacted by stormwater runoff um, as well as leaking sewer pipes, um, all that sort of underground infrastructure failure um, that tends to happen in urban rivers. Rivers that are in culverts um, tend to be pretty much the worst river habitat um, as far as from an aquatic life perspective. Um, there's no sunlight, uh, there's probably no natural sediment, you know, you just put it in a pipe. Broadly, the river quality, the river's water quality is good on most days for boating. Um, I think you can safely boat on almost, in almost all times except when there's big heavy rains. Um, but more work needs to be done before people can safely swim. What we do is we look at how many days the river is suitable for swimming and how many days it's suitable for boating, and then we calculate a grade, and this year it got a C minus. This, in 2009, the river was suitable for swimming 57% of the days, and it was suitable for boating 93% of the days. Despite some of these challenges, new projects are reviving the Malden River. Well, I think one of the big things to celebrate about the Malden River is a new project called River's Edge. And um, if you've been down on the riverfront, uh, it's easy to find the beautiful new park that was created along the Medford side of the river and to see the new buildings that are being built at what used to be a very, very contaminated industrial site. To the left is uh, Medford and on the left you can see the, uh, the River's Edge development with the office park and the residential condominiums. You can also see the Tufts Boathouse. The thing to remember is what you see on the left here in Medford was uh, five years ago it looked just like what was on the right, which was Phragmites and a lot of overgrown banks. Well, River's Edge is a community reinvestment program that's been in some ways 20 years in the making. Uh, essentially it was designed as a project to give back to the community uh, public open space, like you see before you right here, residential opportunities and commercial opportunities. It's taking years and planning and a lot of hard work and perseverance 
Uh, the Mystic Valley Development Corporation was the lead agency to acquire the land. And as you know, John Priatel, PLA, is the master developer who worked with them to create this wonderful project. Mystic Valley Development Commission was uh, created a number of years ago. It started between the cities of uh, Medford and Malden, and then later joined by the, the city of Everett, where we said we would take a joint acreship of 200 acres, <clears throat> put it together, and try and build a city within a city, which again would create a cleaner environment, better jobs, better tax base, and a better quality of life in the community. Now we faced many challenges over the course of time and many people thought that we should abandon the project on, on many occasions. But there was a serious commitment on the part of the three communities and the master developer, John Priotel from Priotel Lane. They did so much work in creating a riverfront park, uh, building these properties, and actually creating a, a space where people can come down and view the river and enjoy it. Uh, and it's our hope that in five more years, what you see on the right will again look like what's on the left. People are headed back to the river. I think the biggest positive that we've seen in this whole area it came from this development and this boathouse. And part of the agreement with Tufts was that they would help mentor uh, crew teams for our high schools. This boathouse is, is unusual. and it, it, the, the phrase I use is it's not your grandmother's boathouse. When, I think when most of us um, are thinking about boathouses, we're thinking of something that probably looks late 19th century, early 20th century, and this, this boathouse is almost futuristic. We have four and a half miles total of rollable water. Uh, it's almost always very, very calm here. It doesn't get very windy on this stretch, and when it does get windy, we always have this stretch to come back to, even if it's unrollable over on the Mystic River side of, of where we row. This area out in front of the boathouse is always really, really nice to row on. For me, it's been just getting back into rowing. It's just it's been really, really great to get back, get back on the water. That it's really local, um, and it's not as you know the Charles River is pretty, pretty it's and you know, but this one is a very nice river. It's up and coming. Uh, there's no real one memory that sticks out. Just being part of this club is memory enough. Oh. Oh. <laughs> we were uh, in a four without a coxswain one time. It's called a straight four, and um, ran aground uh, onto a pipe, and uh, luckily the pipe caused uh, held us up, and didn't, we didn't sink. After a big rain, you can see uh, a lot of the uh, the washout that happens from shore, and the litter, uh, things oil. like plastic bottles, yeah. and, and plastic bags, things that are along the shore now. Just if the cities could take better care of, uh, you know, and, and uh, better and care to pick up trash. And, and the households and businesses who, yep. uh, who flank both uh, shores. Unfortunately, there's a raw sewage pipe that's up by where Kiss 108 used to be, and um, it's not good to stop rowing there. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> true. Yes. So no, don't stop there. Yeah, the, the, yeah. The, there's a sewage pipe that unfortunately it shouldn't be seeping out raw sewage, and unfortunately it has been for all the six years I've been rowing here. So. And it's more the smell. Yes. We've, we've mutinied a couple times when coaches have asked us to stop there. We've kept rowing another 20 strokes and brought us down a little bit further, so we were out of range. I definitely would like to see it get cleaner. I've heard that uh, the cleanup, there's a project to help clean up the river, and it's one or two days every year, and hopefully it has a big impact on the river. I'd just, I'd just like to see more continued growth of really recreation on the river and you know particularly more greener quote unquote uh, sports and activities like rowing and canoeing kayak. The river isn't too clean like a lot of people say. Um, we dug out a number of tires about seven to ten tires in our last cleanup um, but um, it's still a gorgeous river and it's fun to row on uh, during the summertime, so um, all of the advantages outweigh the disadvantages.